check out this article by David Sirota on the Daily Poster. I'll link it down below. Title is Biden's austerity zealotry helped cut the stimulus bill in half. Ugh. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty freaking pathetic when Joe Biden is to the right on Donald Trump on survival checks. I mean, really? I, again, the point Chomsky has made, and it's, it's really good example here, is we have two right-wing parties in the United States. So here's Sirota. If there's any consistent thorough through line in Joe Biden's long career, it is his commitment to the ideology of austerity. He has obsessively pushed for social security cuts for decades. That's true. So receipts, so you can click on the link. So there's literally videos of him on the Senate floor advocating for that. And he is stalking his administration with deficit hawks, including today's announcement that notorious Social Security cutter Bruce Reed will be White House Deputy Chief of Staff. Jesus Christ. Biden has, yep, and this threatened to veto Medicare for all on the grounds that it costs too much, even though Congress has said it would actually save lots of money and, and lots being literally hundreds of billions of dollars a year covering everybody. You save money, people don't die because they don't have health care. People would also not be going bankrupt anymore. Now in the whittling down of the stimulus legislation, we see the first concrete example of how Biden's ideology can change policy in the here and now and in deeply destructive ways. As pain and suffering is crescendoing across the country, Biden's refrain from aggressively pushing the bipartisan initiative for $1,200 survival checks. Indeed, at a time when there was a legitimate chance to flip some Republicans, including Donald Trump, against McConnell and push for a more robust stimulus, he demurred, as Joe Biden is one to do. And we've seen that throughout his long, horrible career in public office. However, the New York Times reminded us today that Biden was not an idle bystander in the ne negotiations. On the contrary, the paper of record tells us that the president-elect played a decisive role in making sure the legislation was cut in half. Here's the key excerpt. Again, this is from the New York Times, the so-called paper of, of record. Is it paper of record? Yeah, paper of record. With Republicans and Democratic leaders in the House and Senate far apart on how much they were willing to accept in a new pandemic spending, Mr. Biden, on December 2nd, threw his support behind the $900 billion plan being pushed by the centrist group. The total was, this, this is a key point, before the election, Trump, his administration, Mnuchin, were on board with a $1.8 trillion stimulus package that would have been, uh, I believe, the $1,200 survival checks along with $400 a week added in unemployment insurance. That would have been retroactive. What they got now is $900 billion, $300 a week added to unemployment insurance. Not retroactive, along with the measly $600 fucking dollars slap in the face. Uh, $900 billion plan being pushed by the centrist group. The total is less than half the $2 trillion that Speaker Pelosi and Senator Chuck Schumer, Democratic Newark, have been insisting on. Mr. Biden's move was not without risk. If it failed to affect the discussions, the president-elect risked looking powerless to move Congress before he had taken the oath of office. But members of both parties said his intervention was constructive and gave Democrats confidence to pull back on their demands. Read that again. Just so it stinks in Biden endorsing an initiative to slash the stimulus bill in half gave Democrats confidence to pull back on their so disgusting for much more robust rescue package at a time when American America faces rising food insecurity and poverty. His enthusiastic lauding of the final bill underscores the role he played in November. The American people spoke clearly that now is the time for action and compromise. <laughs> what, what kind of compromise is he talking about here? Well, obviously not comp. Yeah, it's not a time to compromise. Now is a time to stand up for the working class who is deeply, deeply struggling right now. I mean, one in eight people in the United States was food insecure in the month of November. One in eight people. I'm heartened to see members of Congress heed that message, reach across the aisle, and work together. This is a model for the challenging work ahead of our nation. 
That last line of Biden's statement is arguably the most disturbing foreshadow of all. He's depicting the process which starved America for months and now skimps on benefits as terrific model for the future. Notably, Biden's austerity ideology was not aimed at the, of course it wasn't, he's a huge proponent of the military-industrial complex, the $671 billion military spending package that was tacked on the COVID rescue bill, which also included billions for Trump's space force and new weapon systems. Instead, austerity was targeted at the part of the omnibus legislation that was supposed to help people whose lives have been destroyed by the pandemic again, not going after all the ridiculous shit in there, but Biden was pushing to cut the stimulus, the survival checks that people desperately need in half. That really just shows you just how fucking centrist and neoliberal and shitty Joe Biden is. Biden's pernicious role in this episode previews what we can expect when he takes office. After all, if you draw a Venn diagram of Biden's priorities and McConnell's priorities, the overlap is budget-cutting zealotry, and Biden is building an administration full of precisely those kind of zealots. I don't particularly enjoy being the bearer of bad news. It's not fun to report on those painful truths, but it's better that we know what we're dealing with rather than pretending everything is well. When it comes to budget politics... I spent the last year and a half of my life warning against the dangers of Biden's particular brand of austerity ideology. And again, now uh, the debt, the deficit, it's all fucking bullshit unless you have massive inflation. What government should be doing now is giving people money, $2,000 survival checks each month, each month, canceling student loan debt, enacting Medicare for all, helping out small businesses, keep people on the payroll, and Biden's going to be advocating for the complete opposite. Nope, we got to, we got to, we got to rein in the spending, guys. The, the deficit, the deficit. Don't, don't worry about all the people struggling. What we really got to focus on right now is, is, is the deficit, austerity, cutting back, cutting back. That's fucking Biden in a nutshell. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. In fact, Democratic voters happily rewarded Biden with their party's nomination even after series ads and primary debates spotlighted, bragging, spotlighted him bragging about working with Republicans to try to slash Social Security. <laughs> Perhaps Biden skated because he so brazenly lied about his own record and because austerity can seem like an esoteric and intangible concept. Yeah, say that to the fucking people who would be, you know, affected by, it's not, it's not esoteric and intangible to them. It's fucking real life consequences that'll negatively greatly negatively impact their actual day-to-day fucking lives i mean but now we see what biden austerity means in practice it means meager 600 survival checks instead of 1200 checks the same package that pours money into the pentagon gives rich people big new tax breaks and doubles funding for congress's own private health care system means inadequate unemployment benefits in a bill that devotes six billion to making business executive meals tax deductible and three billion to tax breaks for landlords. Again, Biden didn't have a problem with any of that shit, but no, people getting twelve hundred survival checks, that's that's a bridge too far. That we gotta get that shit out of there. We can't be letting the government be seen as, as helping the working people too much. Joe Biden, twenty twenty four. <clears throat> progressive advocacy groups, activists, and lawmakers do not call out and confront austerity politics head-on. It's going to be a painful four years. They've been warned about Biden's ideology for a long time. The stimulus bill is the biggest warning of all. And again, the whole reason the Democratic establishment, people like Obama, were, were working behind the scenes to prop up Joe Biden was was for these exact fucking reasons, because he's not he's not going to rock the boat. He's gonna He wants to compromise with the Republicans, aka, sell out the work, the working class, as mu- as much as possible, austerity measures, not advocating for things that actually help people, and this is this is just another example of that. And frankly, it's not it's not surprising if you've been paying attention at all to Joe Biden's career. I mean, a- advocating for cutting Social Security, Medicare, supporting NAFTA. The Iraq War said he had veto Medicare for all during a pandemic, and then now we have him working behind the scenes, um, making sure these survival checks were as as measly as they were in that bill. It's disgusting, but not surprising. 
like the video if you like the video if not that's cool too subscribe for more content peace much love stay safe